Welcome back to Backspace Academy. Here we are at the stage now where we're going to be creating some code to interact with Cognito. So what I've got here is I've got the the code for the application on my desktop and I've just opened it up and we'll just have a quick look at it and what we're going to be doing is modifying it and then uploading it to that Amazon S3 bucket and then ref refreshing our browser memory and then we'll our browser cache and then we'll have a look and see what happens. So first thing we want to have a look at is this index.html. So we're not going to be touching that in any way, shape or form. It's really just a user interface, just some buttons and whatever. But what we need to know here is at the bottom of the page, we've got our AWS software development kits. So the first one there is the Amazon Cognito Identity JavaScript SDK. And that will load first. And then after that, we're going to load the AWS JavaScript SDK. And then once they've all loaded, uh, then we're going to start our application. Now, when this application first starts up, the buttons won't be shown. What will be shown will be a spinner image. And we need to have that spinner image there and not the buttons because we need to make sure that we don't click on any buttons or get any code running until our JavaScript SDKs have loaded in. And then once that happens, uh, they will be the spinner icon will be disabled and the buttons will be enabled. So let's have a look at how that, how that works. So we just jump into app.js and so we've got a self invoking anonymous function so when this invokes it's going to first thing is going to hide that spinner because we've just loaded up our javascript sdk and now we're at this stage and then it's just going to show those buttons that need to be shown so that's uh, what you need to include in your or that feature within your application to make sure that there is no code going to be running until that uh, that javascript sdk is loaded in then what we've got is we've got some click event listeners for those buttons that are just going to refer us straight off to some functions. So if we click the sign up button, it's going to take us to the sign up function there. So pretty straightforward stuff. And here we have those functions. So nothing too unusual there. Now, as I said before, we've got this app dash final, which is a final code for the application. So this will be running code. You can use this, not a problem. And this is what we're going to develop. And But if you're going to use it, there's obviously a lot of things that you need to change in here. Obviously, user pool ID, client ID, uh, all that sort of stuff. So what I'm going to do is just start off with, in our main code, there's a, there are a number of variables that need to be accessible within this self-invoking anonymous function. First one being is a region. We need to configure the region. We're using US East 1 for this lab. Make sure that you are as well. We need to have our user pool data, so we need to have that user pool ID and the client ID for our application. We also need to have the identity pool ID from the identity pool that we created. We also need to define a database name for our key store database that we're using with Cognito Sync. And we're going to have some variables there to hold information on our Cognito user, our identity ID, and the Cognito Sync database. So I'm just going to copy those over now. Okay, so let's have a look at the sign up function first. So I'll just copy that over now. Okay, so there are a number of things that we need to collect off our user in that user form. So the first thing we need to get off them is their username and password that they would like to use. And then we need to collect these attributes. Now, if you remember from when we created the user pool, we selected some attributes that we wanted to collect from uh, our user upon registration. And they were the given name, the family name, email address, preferred username, website, gender, birth date, but we also added a custom one there for LinkedIn. So the way we define those is custom colon and then the name of that custom 
the custom attribute. And then what we need to do is we need to pass them over as parameters to the Cognito service with our client ID for that application with that user pool and the password username and then those user attributes. So what we do is we create a Cognito identity service provider object and we use the sign up of that and we pass the parameters to that. One of three things will occur, we'll get an error hopefully not and the kind of errors that could happen is that if we've already signed someone up and they go to sign up again then that will come up with an error if we're trying to use a username or email that has already been used that will come up with an error but if everything goes fine we'll, we won't get an error and then one of another two things will happen if we've set up our user pool to to actually have a verification of our email. So what will happen is a person will sign up and then they will get sent an email to verify their email address. And we've actually done that with this user pool when we, when we created, we did actually say that we wanted to have verified emails. So when we sign, when this person signs up, the user confirmed flag of the data will be false. And so what we need to do is we need to send a message to that user to, to tell them to go and check their email for that verification link. And if we look at the user pool of that person, it will show it as being unconfirmed. And then when they click on that verification link and then we go back into our user pool and have a look at it in the console, we'll see that that user will be confirmed. If we didn't decide to have email verification and we just said that you know just sign people up and don't bother about verifying their email then that data.user confirmed would be true not false so what we'll do now is actually before we do anything I just want to point out here that we're we're actually using AWS JavaScript JavaScript SDK now the reason I'm using that rather than the Cognito JavaScript SDK is that it has better functionality or better reporting back of errors when something goes wrong. So in a situation like this where you don't have or where you have verifications of email and that person will be unconfirmed, what the Cognito JavaScript, it will send an error message back with nothing else, just a 200 response with an error message and you won't know what's going on and that's pretty poor but when you use the AWS SDK you get more information back, it will come back with this data saying whether the user is confirmed or unconfirmed So if, uh, and it won't come back as an error but it will come back as an error with the Cognito JavaScript SDK so if you're wondering why I'm not using the Cognito JavaScript SDK for this part of it that is why and it's going to create or it's going to make life a lot more easy for you now before we do anything we need to make sure that we put the correct information in here for our user pool ID so I'm just going to to go back into our AWS console and so we've got our general settings here for our user pool so there is our user pool ID I'm just going to copy that and bring that over and our client ID so we go back to our user pool we, we select app clients and there's our app client ID so we'll copy that and bring that over as well and we need our identity pool ID so we need to go into our federated identities this is our federated identity pool here and we just need to get the details of that so we can just go to the sample code here and select JavaScript and that will give us our identity pool ID that we need to use so we just copy that one from the sample code and we'll put that into our into our application as well so there you there we have our identity pool ID I'll just put that in there and I'll leave backspace dash users I'll use that that's okay for a name for a uh, for a database not a problem so we'll save that now that that's all done and ready to go, we can upload it to our bucket and run our 
website and see what happens. So jumping into the S3 console, we can upload our, our new app. So we go to our bucket first and then we select our JS folder and we'll upload our new app.js to that. Making sure that we have public permissions on that and upload that. Next thing we need to make sure is that we clear our browser cache. So I'm just clearing the data in my cache. And once we've done that, we can go and refresh our website. So you can see there the spinner is showing while the JavaScript SDK is loading. And then after some time that will stop. So obviously if you're going to have a home page, you wouldn't have this happening on your home page every time someone goes to it. So you'd have a landing page and then you'd have a sign up page uh, that, that would do this because you're not going to need this, you know, unless someone signed in or signing in. Okay, so we've got our buttons there available. So let's go through the sign up process. So we'll put in all our details. Okay, so thanks to the magic of pre-recorded video, I've very quickly put that in there. So we've got our e email address there, we've got our password, all of those attributes. We've also got our custom attribute in there, which is our LinkedIn profile page. We'll click on, actually what I'll do first is I'll press F12 so we can see anything that's coming through on our, uh, on our console. And I'll just click on sign up and see what happens. So we're starting the sign up process, user confirmed. And let's have a look at that. So we've got here, user confirmed is false. So remember when we we're saying that this will come back as false if you still need to click on a verification link. If we didn't have that happening, then this user confirmed here uh, would come up as true. And so because of that, our code has picked up on that rather than using the Cognito JavaScript SDK, which would just give us an error, which I think is absolutely crazy. Uh, using the AWS SDK, we can quite safely handle this and get our verification link. So we just click on OK, and that's all we need to do. So what we do now is we go into our into our email and click on that verification link, and then that will change. So what we'll do is before we do that, I'm going to jump into the user pool and have a look at our users and groups. So it's saying there, no users found but there are. So what we need to do is just click on the refresh button here on the right hand side. Click on that and there we can see. So there is that user. It's enabled but the status is unconfirmed because I haven't clicked on that email verification link which I'll do now. Okay so I've just clicked on that verification link and it says that my registration has been confirmed. So I'm just going to close that. Go back to my user pool and I'm going to click again that refresh icon and see what happens. And there we can see that the status is now confirmed. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is to go through a sign in process. So let's have a look at that. 